Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and in today's video, ASCII file creation tips and tricks, I'm going to show you how to make ASCII files and how to troubleshoot common problems. There are two ways to make an ASCII in Eclipse. I'm going to go over the, the method that allows you to set up the settings first and to do that requires that I be in a document. So I'll open up my document and you'll see that right now I don't have an ASCII file for this document. So I can open the ASCII settings by going to Shift-Alt-O or by going to Production, Output to ASCII, and that opens the Create ASCII settings. You can enter a page range or specific pages in the Pages box to create an ASCII of just those pages. You can enter volumes in the Volume box to create an ASCII of just those volumes. Or you can check the Excerpt box to make an ASCII that just has excerpts that you've marked in the document. Right now, if I press OK, it should replicate one of the most common problems that we hear about in tech support. The error that I get is the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. If I hit OK, I get the same message again, but this time from Eclipse instead of Windows. I'll hit Cancel to this message so I can see if I can figure out what's going on. In the ASCII settings window, at the bottom, the output button controls where your ASCII gets made. Right now, that's going to my jobs folder under Documents, Eclipse, and then Ashley. However, at the top where it says Make Copies to, I have Make Copies set to 1. That means that an additional copy of my ASCII is being made, it, made automatically for me. And if I hit the Browse button, it'll show me where that ASCII is going. And so here I see that it is also going to Documents, Eclipse, Ashley. So what's happening here is that Eclipse is trying to create two ASCII files in the same location at the same time with the same name, and it, Windows does not allow that to happen. And so there's two ways that I can fix this. I can either just set Make Copies to zero, and I'll get the singular copy wherever I point output at, or I can leave Make Copies at one and hit the Browse button and select a different location for my extra ASCII in case I actually do need a second one, like on my USB drive. So I'll highlight my USB drive and click OK. And now if I press OK, it tells me to insert the media for the extra copy and I'll press OK and the ASCII file has been created. If I go to my file manager, I do indeed see an ASCII file now and it is a representation of the document I'm in. And if I go to File Explorer and open up my USB drive, I see my ASCII file here as well. And if I open it up, it's exactly the same as the other one. The other settings in the ASCII window are related to the actual format of the ASCII itself. All of these checkboxes change the way the ASCII will look and function. There is a style dropdown that allows you to choose from some custom preset options that Eclipse automatically loads, and these will fit some common requests that you may get. If you are re ever asked for a summation ASCII, you can just come in here and select summation amicus and hit OK, and it'll create an ASCII with the summation format automatically. Standard page image is the most common format and typically works for most purposes. Allow headers and allow footers allows your header and footer in your document to appear on the ASCII. If you don't have headers and footers in your ASCII, this will insert blank space between your pages. Sometimes this is desirable and sometimes it's not. So you can come in here and check or uncheck these as desired or requested by your client. No blank lines will produce an ASCII with no blank lines. It will be single spaced and any lines that you left blank in your document will simply be omitted. Use form feeds will insert a trigger in the document that certain softwares and older printers would use in order to create uh, transcripts, um, software like Real Legal and things like that to create eTrans. Um, typically is what form feeds are used for nowadays. A long time ago, they were triggers for printers to know when to change pages, uh, but really they're not used by printers anymore. Allow time codes allows your time codes to be displayed in the ASCII if they're displayed in the document. If they're not displayed in the document, then you won't get time codes in your ASCII even if this is checked. Page number at top left will just force your page number to be in the top left on every document that, or every ASCII document that you make, regardless of where it is in your settings. Force all caps will make only the ASCII come out in all caps. So if you need to produce all caps works work, you can do it easily without changing your document settings. HTML index is interesting and will produce a 
a clickable keyword index uh, that you can use along with your index along with the ASCII. Um, these aren't used so much since PDF creation now includes the concordance word index, but I'll show you really quick what they look like. So if I check HTML index and hit OK, it will create a file, three files actually, uh, that open up in your web browser of choice. You're going to open up the primary one and hit open. And this is where you can see your word index. On the right, it'll have every word that's in the document. And you can click on it to be taken to that part of the transcript. And on the left, it'll have the actual text of the ASCII. Um, you can't type into this at all um, like you would be able to if it was open in Notepad. Um, however, you can copy and paste text. Well, you can copy text out of it and paste it somewhere else. You cannot paste text into this window since it's open in a web browser. Um, the, these are some limitations that make PDFing a much better option. In addition to the HTML index, you can also change the force left setting. Uh, if that's set at negative one, it'll use the default in your document. If it's set to anything else, it will insert that many spaces to the left of your text on each line. Um, so if you want everything to start indented 10 spaces in, you can set this to 10 and that's what the ASCII will do. Force page numbers. If you have this set to no, it will um, just number your pages according to the settings in your document. So if you have any pages omitted, they'll be omitted on the ASCII as well. If you have it set to yes, you'll get a page number on every page regardless of your document settings. And if you have it set to every line, you will get um, your page number on every line of your ASCII um, in addition to your line number. So I'll show you really quick what that looks like. And you see here that I have one space one in front of each line. Force line uh, is similar to force page numbers. And this is um, if you have it set to on, your line numbers are always on on every page for every line. If you have it set to off, your line numbers are off for every page for every line. And if you have it set to as is, it'll just replicate whatever you have omitted and resumed in your document itself. You can add custom ASCII settings. If, for instance, you have one client that wants the header but not the footer, and they don't need form feeds and they don't want your time codes, you can always set the ASCII settings the way you need for that client and hit add and type in the client name as the ASCII style name. And now that ASCII style name will be listed in your settings. And you can easily switch between it and make ASCIIs whenever you need without having to have a separate user just to create ASCIIs if that's the only difference that that client is asking for. Some other frequent questions that we get about ASCIIs are related to what they're actually capable of. ASCIIs don't get any of the font information from your document. They only get the characters, so they only get letters, punctuation, and spaces. Um, they don't get any bolding, italicized text, or underlined text. They also don't get font changes. If you use different fonts throughout your document, the ASCII will not reflect that. If you need those things to be reflected in your final product, the PDF is the way to go. ASCII files also cannot contain attachments, and they do not display um, any images or graphics if you're using a graphic for your signature um, or for perhaps your company logo. So ASCIIs do have some limitations compared to PDFs, but they do still have a place mostly for things like e-transcripts. Uh, some clients do request that you send them ASCIIs instead of PDFs. And you can always do that. And if you have any problems with any of the settings, please give tech support a call and we can always help you make sure that you can meet your client's needs. If you are going to be working with a scopist, uh, an ASCII is generally not the best bet. If your scopist is on Eclipse, you want to just send them the ECL file. If they're on a version of Eclipse prior to version five, you would want to send them an RTF file. And if they're using a different CAT system, you would want to send them an RTF file as well. And that way you can get that information all back into Eclipse cleanly. ASCII files are great as a final product, but they are not great as a communication product between people working on a file. It's important to remember that ASCII should not be printed. If you need a page-by-page -page representation of your document on paper, you should either just print it directly to paper or make a PDF of it that can be printed later. Um, ASCIIs, when they print, they just don't come out good. They do not paginate correctly. Uh, because the way that ASCIIs print and open, 
Uh, because they open in plain text editors, uh, there's really nothing here that tells that tells the ASCII how it should print or where the page break should be. Um, just because you put this information through a printer doesn't mean it's going to know that this is actually the end of a page. Uh, new printers don't use these form feed marks anymore to know. And if you have the font size of this uh, transcript turned or of this program, this notepad program turned up very high, that's also going to inflate how many pages it'll take to print the document. And so you could print the same document in two different font sizes and get wildly different page counts. Um, so ASCII's are not what you want to be printing. Um, if someone wants a page by page representation, send them a PDF. ASCII's are for eTrans and some other services like that. They aren't really a final product that should go to paper. If you're looking for a final product to go to paper, either print directly to paper or make a PDF. One final note about ASCII's, something that used to be very common but is thankfully no longer common, is ASCII disks. That is the reason that this Make Copies to feature exists. If I were to set the Make Copies to 3, it would attempt to make three copies of the ASCII on separate disks. This is intended for use with floppy disks, and what it would allow you to do is insert a floppy disk, create an ASCII, hit OK, insert a new floppy disk, hit OK, create an ASCII, so on and so forth. This is typically not required anymore, but should anyone ask you for a handful of ASCII disks, this is how you would do it. The second way to make an ASCII in Eclipse is to go into the File Manager and select the file that you'd like to make an ASCII of, and then hit the ASCII button and it'll use whatever your default settings for ASCII's are. And so I can just press OK and OK, and now I have an ASCII of that file, and I'll have an ASCII of that file on my USB drive. It's important before you use the File Manager ASCII button that you've gone through Shift-Alt-O or Production Output to ASCII and set up all the settings the way that you want them, because these are the settings that'll be used when you um, make an ASCII using the ASCII button in the File Manager. Thank you for watching today's videos. If you have any questions about ASCII creation or any other of Eclipse's features or questions about any other Advantage Software product, Advantage Software is always available. Tech support is available 24-7 anytime, including holidays and weekends, and can be reached at 1-800-800-1759 or 772-288-3266 for international callers. If you have a question that doesn't need an immediate reply, you can always reach us by email at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.